introductions. Hello and welcome to the Debian new member of. I'm uh, Enrico Zini, one of the Debian account managers, uh, people who uh, have responsibility for who is a member in Debian. And I'm John Vito. Um, I'm John McDowell. I'm involved with the front desk, which is sort of assigning new, mem new members to uh, application managers and whatever, and also keyring main, so the person who, or, or one of the people who um, adds keys to the Debian keyring once they've gone through this process and actually uh, join the project proper. Um, who among you is an application manager? Two, three? who among you is in the new member process at the moment? One, two, three. <laughs> That's uh, you, you are uh, Sch Schrodinger uh, new member. <laughs> at any moment, you can look inside the box and discover your ADV. <laughs> waiting for uh, the account to be created. Um, um, okay, we have a bit of a presentation. Uh, the people who didn't raise hand. Uh, uh, recent graduate. Recent graduate. Recent graduate. Meaning? I'm a DV now. Oh, okay. Right, okay. Uh, other people? Who didn't raise hand? Uh, curious. Uh, Lurking. Hmm? Lurking. Lurking. Excellent. Perfect. As a recent graduate, can I ask how you find the experience? Um, and and um, lots of delays involved. On whose part? Um, not naming names, but sort of on on most of the people. Most of the people. They seem to be characterized by delays. In some cases, nine months or more. Wow. Nine months is a lot. It's a long time. A recent graduate, as in you became a DD in the last six months? Last summer. Last summer. You flushed me through. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so was that nine months without? Was that nine months without any contact? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I sort of have some memory. <laughs> Was that nine months without any contact between you and the person involved, like other than I mean, an occasional ping? Did, did you get anyone else involved in that, or was it just a waiting for the other? I didn't want to get into this, but yes, I tried to get other people involved and got no response. Oh, okay. Um, that that's bad because occasionally, I've, I mean, I've certainly had at least one experience in my front with my front desk hat on of discovering someone who had sort of several months of no reply, and had only just got around to emailing someone else about it and going, it's been like, you know, three or four months with no reply, what's going on? It's like, oh, right, well, because um, once a process has been assigned, from, from my perspective, um, in front desk, if I assign you an application manager, um, it goes away from my view. You're, you're dealing with someone else whose responsibility it is then to, to make that project process move along, um, and I have, no visibility unless I actively go and have a look at what mails have been exchanged, which I don't do because I'm not micromanaging anyone. I've got other things to do. But equally, it means that if there's a problem, you have to email front desk. You know, if you, if you see a problem like that, then we're not always going to fix the problem. I, if a front desk fell down, I apologize for that. But nm at debian.org, um, if you've got delays in your process that you think are unreasonable, if you're sitting waiting for more than a few weeks and there's no explanation for it, drop front desk of mail. Um, I have happily unassigned applicants from application managers who are not responsive and find them someone else. I can't promise I'll get you someone immediately, but we will help move those processes along. It, it could be that a year ago there wasn't you uh, and front desk was not responsive. Okay. That is... We've got better. I promise. It looks like it. <laughs> yeah, the, um, so ideally you would, so the ideal and end process is supposed to take 
couple of weeks at the most for an average amount. Yeah, that, that, that's not ideal indeed. Because um, one is supposed to apply only when already ready to have an account. Most of the check should have been done by the advocate, but we know from experience we cannot just trust the advocate. We've had advocates going, yeah, I had a beer with that person last night. They seem good enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Um, it wasn't a beer, I think. Uh, it was, uh, I hosted them at my place, but anyway. Um, and, and so the application manager is supposed to do peer review of the advocate in theory, which means asking a few questions as a person who hasn't worked with the applicant, figure if mm, indeed they, they look ready to have an account and say, go ahead, create an account. And in theory, either the person feels like they're already a member of the project, then the account then one say, yeah, okay, go in, or the person feels like they done, they are really not feeling like a member of the project, then one can say, um, not yet. And that should be it, it shouldn't really take much. But then there are mm, life issues, so mm, motivations change, uh, the routine in somebody's life doesn't include NM anymore, there's Issues in acknowledging one doesn't have time and al always going like, oh, but maybe I can tomorrow. So it's like, mm, if I have the time to give the person back, then I have the time to answer their email, which is sick, but it, it kind of works like that. Um, so if you reckon it's a couple of weeks, I mean, do you have stats? I mean, what is, what is average? No, uh, in my head, uh, it's a couple of weeks. Right, okay. Stats. Sure. I mean, having gone through the process with, with a couple of applicants, one of them was all the way through in like three weeks flat, and that seemed very quick. I, from my personal experience on, on both AMing and front desking, three weeks, I would say, is reasonably quick. Yeah. Um, the, the, temp, the, the questions that are asked are wordy. It does take some time oh, to answer the, the yes. response. Um, you know, people need time. To, I need time to sit down and actually do justice to reading it. And, and people need time. Even whenever they, they know the answers, it takes time to sit down and, and put something on paper. So, so three weeks doesn't seem unreasonable. Two years is absolutely ludicrous. Um, but Sure. So on the flip side, I've had a couple of applicants. I mean, I've got one right now who is not necessarily responding from one month to the next. He's, he's interested, but appears to have gone quiet. I've just paid him, in fact. Uh, it's a, how long do we, do we leave things? And obviously, it's a, some of it was, I went quiet for a month, I was away on vacation, that kind of thing. It's, a, it, it's managing the expectations. And, and sure, and, and the initial process of managing those expectations about how long the process should take is between the applicant and the application manager. And, you know, if an applicant is busy, there's no problem about them going. It's going to take me a couple of weeks. I'm away on business. Um, I dealt with Jonathan's application, and he told me at one point, look, I'm going to be away. I'm, I'm traveling on business. I won't be able to respond. No problem. You know, when we came back, we, we picked it up again. Sometimes I'm busy, and it's like it'll take me a few days. That, that's fine. But if it gets to the point that um, one side isn't comfortable with the, the delays that are going on, if you're an application manager and your applicant is taking, you know, two months to reply, then you, you need to put them on hold so that you can actually deal with someone who's ready to go. And equally, if you're an applicant whose um, you know, AM is taking two months to reply and, and you're ready to go, you need to contact front desk so we can try and get you someone a bit more responsive. I, di I didn't mean to hijack the, 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 this issue. And let me just say that I contributed to the delay. Um, yeah, I mean, absolutely. The delays tend to involve more than one person. Um, but the, the, there are, and I think there have been issues in the past with either we haven't had enough application managers. Um, as of today, we're actually quite good in that we've got a bunch of people with spare slots. We're actually on top of things. So it's a good day for an NM buff. We've got like about four or five people with free slots and no one waiting to be assigned. Um, 
but that's not always the case. Sometimes I've had people come back and it's been you know, a few weeks before we've had a spare AM to give them, so the, the delays sometimes naturally happen. Um, for people who aren't in the process but are thinking about it, is there anything you know that's making you hold off on it, or are you just sort of weighing it up at the moment, or are there concerns, or is there something we can be doing better? Um, no one wants to answer that one. Screen? Or me? I can't do stats at the moment. It requires more programming than I can wing at the moment. I was, oh, I'm sure it's on the you know, it might help. late I'm not sure if this uh, it's not clear to me what it means to be a member could you talk a bit about this um, so in Debian there's several well everyone that contributes to Debian is a Debian contributor that that title is purely if you do something, you don't need to have any process to get. And contributors show up on nm.debian.org, hopefully, as long as they contribute in one part of Debian where there's uh, a data feed for the site. Uh, if one doesn't show up, one is encouraged to help create a data feed for the site in that field, in that part of Debian. And, uh, but, and to be a Debian contributor entitles you to say that you contribute to Debian. Uh, then if um, then there's a, an official membership that gives uh, at Debian.org email address and the right to vote and uh, other things, um, which kind of makes it official that a person has been contributing to Debian for long enough that they have an idea how the project works and they should influence the choices of the project. In the project election, they can be trusted to log in into the various Debian machines. And if having upload rights, they can also be trusted to upload any package in Debian at any time. So that's, uh, that has some responsibility related to it. So that in order to get that, there is a process where you need an advocate that says that person is effectively a part of Debian. Let's make it official. And uh, then there is an application manager that will exchange some emails to kind of peer review what the advocate said. And then if all goes well, then there, there's a ticket in an issue tracker asking for the account to be created. So this is the new member process. So there's the, the Debian contributors and the, and the Debian members. It used to be called Debian maintainers, but the, the, the Debian members are not necessarily maintaining packages. They're maybe uh, writing web applications to run the new member process, <laughs> for example. Um, so the name has been changed at some point. Then in the, there's a gray area thing called the Debian member. Sorry, bro, for the, Deb, the Debian maintainer for, for extra confusion, which is a Debian contributor who gets whitelisted to upload specific packages. So when, because when you're not a Debian member, you can upload packages via a sponsor. So you give the package to a Debian member that will upload it for you. And the sponsor after a while can say, look, I've been uploading this package of yours for two years and I'm not even looking at it. So go ahead and upload it yourself. And so there is a, a one can get whitelisted to upload packages and there is a quick check to see that you have a GPG encryption key that is, has been signed by someone, so you are somehow a distinct person 
you have a reputation that is not completely anonymous to the project and uh, you would sign an email saying that you agree to uphold the Debian social contract in what you do because you get some responsibility so there's like at least you agree to do it the way Debian expects things to be done. So that's kind of a gray area, but that's not an official member of the project. It's more like to sm smoothen, so sort of d decrease the load on the sponsor. We may sponsor other packages for you, but for that one, it's clear you know how to do it. And then after somebody's been a Debian maintainer for a while, then become a Debian developer. Or sit as a Debian maintainer. I mean, there are people who have an interest in getting a particular package into Debian, and that's that's as far as it goes. You know, they they want to maintain that package. They they'll do the best they can. They have no interest, particularly in voting or getting involved in the heavier weight stuff. So Debian maintainership is was introduced as a lightweight way that you can you can scratch that itch without having to go through the other bits if you don't want to. Um, these days, it's seen as a good stepping stone on the way to sort of getting full DD ship, but um, th there's no problem with sticking around as a DM for as long as it suits you. And equally, um, Debian contributors, it's a lightweight recognition of someone's involvement with the project um, who's dipping in and out or is doing something that they don't feel they need to go through the hoops to get to this extra stage. And, um, you know, again, we've now got a method of, of recognizing the fact that and the great work that, that lots of people do without going through all the formal hoops of the new, me new member process. Um, so it's a choice thing. You get to choose where you want to go to. And unfortunately, as there is slightly more um, rights and, and uh, privileges associated with that particular level of membership, there's a little bit more process to go through. Maybe I can make statistics. Got carried away. I mean, it, it is a buff rather than prepared slides. So we're kind of interested if anyone wants to ask something or make a comment or, or anything we can sort of help out with. It's kind of an, an informal session. Um, what kind of prep process is there for the AMs? Do they get any kind of guidance before they uh, start out? No. <laughs> Um, th there's, a, there's a set of templates. So there are a set of templates that the AMs um, are encouraged to use and, and send out in terms of asking the questions and, and walking through them. Um, and I've been doing this on and off for years, depending on my um, activity levels, and I still use those. And I know of at least one instance someone told me about where their um, applicant had actually already downloaded them. I mean, they're in public. You can go and look at these. They're there. The applicant had already downloaded them before they entered the process, had worked out their answers to all of them, and it was a very quick process because they cut and pasted their answers pre-prepared in into the mails. It's like, well, that's fine. That shows initiative. That shows you know how to find stuff in Debian. It was their own answer, so it was their own words of, like, this is the answer to the question. They'd had the time to go and look at it, whatever. None of this is meant to trip people up, so, so I, I'm in favor of the templates and also gives things. But, yeah, the, the, a, the AM process is pretty much you can log into the site and you can say, I've got a spare slot, sign me someone. Um, and from front desk point of view with a new AM, we're sort of trying to sign you someone who we think is a bit easier or someone you know maybe we know has got some highly visual um, contributions, which means it'll be a bit of an easier process for you to walk through as your first one. But yeah, maybe, maybe we should be better than that. I don't, I don't know. So there's contributors, maintainers, and members. Uh, contributors <laughs> and maintainers aren't necessarily members, but all members are contributors in some way. Is that the correct or to draw the diagram? C contributors covers anyone who contributes to Debian. So, no, so if you, you, you file a bug, you uh, comment on a bug, you contribute on the mailing list, you, um, you know, maintain something in the package, or you whatever it is, Contributors.debian.org will, will track any contribution. So, so that's the, the superset of everyone. Um, a Debian maintainer is someone who has the rights to upload one or more specific packages. 
so they have <coughs> upload rights, and a full-on member who can either have uploading rights or, or no uploading rights is someone who's actually um, able to vote in the project and able to get sort of um, full, full access to sort of the, the project's resources. Um, and it's important to note that we have got this concept of a non-uploading Debian member, um, which we didn't previously have, which meant that some people who are maybe only doing documentation and we had a process that would have you know, asked you about your packaging skills when what you wanted to contribute to Debian was nothing to do with that side of things and they were inappropriate questions. Now I can go the full step of, of getting access and having voting rights. And we still do some checks about, you know, do you understand free software? Do you understand the, the logic behind Debian and, and all of that stuff to, to make sure that people try and fit in with the ethos of the project? But you don't need to be um, even highly technical in order to be able to, to go down that path. I know that there are people who have been involved with organizing DevConf for years who have gone down that path and been recognized for their valuable contributions to the project. Um, Jonathan, I'm IRC just pointing out that um, if you take a look at the Debian membership of wiki.debian.org, um, uh, wiki Debian or Debian membership in Camel Case. So, so the table at the top shows the various rights and the graph at the bottom sort of shows how you could move between things. Does that help? Questions? Yeah, I have a question that, that maybe I couldn't have looked up myself. You have the other. Um, the, do people spend a certain amount of time or how much is the average amount of time that people spend as a contributor uh, before applying for a membership? Or is it that... That process just depends on the person. Each person. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. It's, it's how long is a piece of string. Um, obviously, you don't want someone coming cold into the, the member process without sort of any experience of Debian and whatever. But sometimes people, I've seen people who are, I'm going to go down the um, new member route, but I've got some packages I'm already uploading, so I'm going to do the Debian maintainer process and then in parallel or very soon afterwards they start the membership process because of what they want to do. There's someone who went through it recently who's um, going to be uploading a lot of new packages as part of the, the, the team they're involved with um, and it doesn't make sense for them to go through the new maintainer process because that's a white listing on packages not on new packages so they're going straight to the member process because that's more applicable in that case. So it's a, a case by case basis. What does this person want to achieve? What's their, all right, their existing comfort level? Um, I think you would need to have some involvement at the contributor stage before you would get to any of the later stages, but, but where that sits and how long you have to do that depends very much on the situation. I fail at SQL, never mind. That's okay, I was failing at SQL yesterday. What's on the screen? And maybe to also have return, uh, return paths to, to developers or to contributors. Yeah, yeah, so, so, as Gunnar points out. So, so the, um, the, the path to, to leaving or stepping back from Debian is to go to Emeritus. Um, and there is sort of a lightweight coming back in. So if you're not active and you're sort of like, oh, well, I'm just not going to, I'm going to give up the rights I have because I'm not using them. You know, you can gracefully leave and become emeritus, and then whenever you want to come back, it's a much lighter weight process of, you know, you've obviously proved you know this stuff before. It depends how long you've been away, that maybe there's some new technical questions we need to ask you, but in general, it's a lighter weight process to come back. And definitely, we much prefer people who don't have time for Debian anymore to stand up and say that rather than go completely missing and have to be chased down or, or work out whether or not, you know, they're still around. Yeah. Uh, the idea is that as soon as somebody <coughs> knows that they're not going to be active in Debian for the next few months, then it makes sense to be either set oneself on vacation if one knows they will be coming back, or uh, become emeritus if one doesn't know when they're going to be coming back. 
which really helps also reducing the attack surface of Debian because each active Debian member can log in into every active into every Debian machine. Um, so we really don't want someone to become inactive. Uh, leave their computer somewhere because they don't even remember that they have access to Debian machines and suddenly their SSH key is somewhere. Um, yeah. um, for the people who've been through the NM process recently, how was the website? Was it understandable? I mean, it was because you became Debian developer. <laughs> I mean, uh, where were there things that weren't clear or same for people who advocate people, for people who became Debian member? If there's any feedback on the website, something you didn't understand, I would like to know. Has anyone in the room actually done an advocation for someone on the website? Steve, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it's okay, good. Easy enough to use. Good, good. Okay. Yeah, the website stuff is lovely. Much better than some of the other, the similar processes I've had to deal with within a corporate situation, put it that way. Okay. Well. That is fake praise. Well, not, not, don't get me wrong. So, so I don't know who's been involved in the process in the past, but the, previously, there was a lot of manual tracking of which, what, how people, far people were along in the situation. Um, it was a manual send an email with an application to a mailing list, which works for some people, but it's quite hard to track the progress of what's going on. So that the new website hopefully solves some of the problems about seeing things being active or things getting lost in the cracks um, by making it all trackable in one place. I mean, you can go and see, you know, what, where the, what pieces are required. If I show you, actually, I can show you. I've, I've been trying to automate everything that, that can possibly be automated so that the, the, everything that feels like bureaucracy would be kind of as painless as possible, but so, so automating bureaucracy may leave corner cases out or something. So Yeah, so this, this is the view I see as a, as a front desk person, and, and the really cool thing is that it, it tracks sort of all of the requirements. So I can see that these people need something done with their keys. Um, Dave needs an AM assigned, but then he's got a problem with his key, so that's why he hasn't got to that. But it's very clear for me to go, right, this is where this process is. And at the bottom I can see, right, these people have free slots. So because it's all tracked in the website now, you can actually walk through your process and you can see, you, you know, that Dave can see exactly which of his requirements he has and doesn't have and, and where he is in it. And you can sort of go into the process and, and you can annotate a log and you can see your advocates and it's in one place and you can work out what's going on, which wasn't the case before. Um, so if, if anyone who's been through the, the process, maybe what, when, when did you move over? About a year and a half ago or was it more recently? Uh, uh, he knows. Um, well, um, Process one was started um, uh, June 2016. Okay, so, so we've had about just over a year of, of the new website. Um, and certainly from my perspective, it seems to be moving along reasonably well. And it is much easier to track where people are and who needs attention. Um, so if you've heard bad things about NM and that's put you off in the past, please consider giving it a try. Um, and as I say, we. Do contact front desk if you've got delays or problems, or if anybody's you, concerned based on that tale of woe I gave. It looks like you've absolutely fixed it. That's a much much better chart than a year ago. Yeah, I mean uh, th that's th those those three are the, the people that are currently outstanding. Now, to be fair, we did a bunch of stuff yesterday and the day before <laughs> in order to get that. But there were you know a handful of people. I think there were four DDs who had um, keys added to the key ring yesterday and are just waiting for the DSA step and there's like about six or seven DMs. Yeah, those three were not the only people in the queue because there's all those assigned yeah. to application managers. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Th those are the three that are sitting not waiting for an application manager. So the, the ones that are applicants. actually assigned. Hmm? You go to applicants? And we hope you also look in um, IRC to this room. 
Uh, hash. Uh, okay. Um, I just joined, so uh, um, please sorry. repeat the questions in the channel. Yeah, okay, so this is the stuff that's currently outstanding. Currently open ones. Yeah. So we're talking quite a lot about the process of. Is the full list of AM of the AMs available and working? So, so this is the list. Um, it, sorry, it's quite small from that. So it's the process is currently open, and we it's it's not because of lack of AMs at the moment. We actually have spare AMs. These are people who are in the process of talking to AMs or. Um, s some of them need keys. So the the if we look at Jeff just to pick him because I can see him in the room. Um, this this yeah yeah. So the, so there you go. So we don't, don't count him against us. But equally, this won't appear on my list until it's actually sat on the new maintainer list for five days. So it gives anyone a chance to sort of look at it and go, hang on, actually there's there's some issues, or there's a chance for people who are active in the project to see a process when it starts before it actually gets kicked off properly. Um, and equally, they'll need to go and advocate. You can see he doesn't have any advocates because he's literally only checked on that, so someone should sort that out for him. Um, I'm just trying to look at the other ones to see if there's anything obvious. Yeah, there's a... Uh, Paolo is the same. Still has Is, no is anyone else in the room on that list? You've been assigned an AM. <laughs> I, I didn't say anything, it just happened. It just happened. <laughs> I did promise. <laughs> quite, quite frankly, the process is getting better year on year on year, and that's been largely due to a lot of the attention of people in this room, particularly towards the front. Yeah. Um, Enrico for massively streamlining this. This is awesome stuff. Enrico says he doesn't like people saying good work. Um, <laughs> I like en it. En Enrico's work on this website makes my job a hell of a lot easier. I, it, for me now, it's I can go and click and assign you an AM. I can see who's free. It streamlines the process. It reduces the friction to me going in and um, as an AM, checking where I am in the process as a front desk person progressing people throughout the process. It, it, it means I, I, I know I can go and spend five minutes and do some useful work in Debian when I've got them here and there, rather than having to go, I need a block of two hours in order to try and track down what's going on. Um, so uh, yeah, thanks. I'm quite proud that until uh, the intent and until these three are satisfied basically, which means you say you want to become something, somebody says, I agree, and you say you agree to do things in Debian. Until those three are satisfied, um, there's no load on front desk, because there's a robot that um, takes care of pinging and closing if nothing happens in two weeks. I, that helped. I, I just want to scroll down the page to the process is closed in the last 30 days, because um, that's kind of a bit more interesting, because it does show that we're actually achieving stuff. It's not as big as the list of outstanding stuff, but it does show that a bunch of people have had um, Either their, their requirements closed because they didn't get as far as, as getting the advocate and everything. So, you know, we weed people out whenever they don't get those steps. So it doesn't eat into the rest of the process's time. But equally, you know, there's a bunch of DMs, there's two uploading DDs that are in that list. Um, you know, things are getting done, hopefully. That. Is, is that public? Can people go and look at that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so these are the nmdebian.org slash processes. The only column that's not public and shouldn't be seen by anyone is FD comments, where we may say, this person is really bad, but don't tell anyone. But it's not really used. <laughs> <laughs> so, fine. Yeah. Oh, actually, you can impersonate someone, I think to make sure that you are like a um, non-front desk person. Can I impersonate someone as If a you click on a... Yeah, yeah, no, but does impersonating show me that one? Yeah, if... if, if you yeah. Yeah. 
Jeff, I'm going to pretend to be you. Is that okay? Don't violate the MEV. So yeah, so so I'm not Jeff. And if um, you go to applicants, the FD comment column should be gone. If it's not, yeah, I help. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so th this is what okay. what you would see as a thing, but you you essentially see all that information except for the FD. So you can log in and see how busy the process is. You can see where you sit and, and all of that stuff. And just to go back to being. As an applicant, you see all of this. So you can see missing requirements, um, and you can see sort of the requirements at the bottom and, and whether they've been approved and where they are. So you get this viewpoint as well as, as front desk, um, which hopefully helps. And there's, there's delays that you can sort of see where you are in the process. It doesn't solve unresponsive people, but it does let you know that there's some progress. So we spent a lot of time talking about the process itself. Is anybody here looking for more guidance on do they want to be in Debian or, or what they gain from it or what they should be doing? I guess not. Okay. Well, I've started to upload, a, I've uploaded one package, so I thought I'd hear what might be next steps. Is that uh, through a sponsor? Yes. Um, and, and have you, you know, do you have a regular sponsor? Have you a regular involvement, or is this you've uploaded it once, or what, what stage are you at in this? The person who invited me and said he would sponsor the package, the package got uploaded by someone else. <laughs> so what, where that fits into your framework? So that, that, that's certainly the precursor to Debian maintainership. Would sound like the route you're going down. Um, for what it's worth, the, the men, men, was that through mentors? So I'm told Mentors is working reasonably well, which is the initial stage of if you've got a package you want to upload and it's new um, and you need someone to sponsor your upload because you're not a Debian maintainer. I don't know if there's anyone from them in the room, but I was speaking to someone yesterday who said there's actually a reasonably active group of people there who will pick up packages and upload it. So that's definitely a good way to get started. Um, the, the idea would be that um, at some point you'll have worked with some people who feel you're doing good work that they're not checking your packages because you know what you're talking about and they will be able to advocate you for Debian maintainership which will then mean you have the right to upload that package by yourself and, and that I would imagine is the next step. Ironically the first package to get uploaded, the person did not look at mentors, he just looked, worked directly from the packaging repo. Okay. And that, work, that happens as well. And, and that's, I mean there are a bunch of teams so I've seen people who are interested in particular areas go and find a team to get involved with, which sort of puts you in the contributor um, bracket and then someone else will maybe worry about the uploads and then the team, some of the team will sponsor you. So for the, the package Perl, for example, um, which does Perl modules and Perl related things and there's equally there's um, Ruby and there's you know, the, the common languages and there's uh, package electronics I know has a team of people doing packages related to sort of electronics stuff. Um, and you can get involved there, contribute in within that environment, hopefully get some support from the rest of the team about how things are done and how they do things, and someone else will worry about uploading it. So that's a, that's a good way, if you have a particular area of interest, to get involved um, with some other people who are interested in that same thing. Yeah, generally, if you, are working to, if you are working together with other people in Debian at some point, somebody will say, why don't you get an account? Or yeah. if you've been doing stuff for if you think like you belong, you can ask people, how about I get an account? The only problem we have is, and it's a, it's a weird corner case, is people who become Debian maintainers and spend five years maintaining those two packages. And then they would say, yeah, but I, I, wouldn't mind, I would like to vote now. And suddenly nobody's been working with them for the last four years and they can't find an advocate. And I have no idea how to fix that. Um, so make sure that uh, if you contribute to Debian, you keep having some social network inside Debian, which is a good idea anyway, because you don't want to be in Debian alone. If you want to have some friends that, that know what you can talk to. Turn up to DevCon. It's a real good social event yeah. to actually meet everybody up at April here. 
question or comment? I like to repeat myself. Creating blends or contacting blends people is a good way to to find a friendly environment and friends you sponsor and and do something to get new members. Yeah, if you are because interested in, in Debian Meet plan, we got one Debian developer per year because Debian Meet exists. They okay. can help this. Yeah, uh, teams in Debian are a very good way of getting involved because it's easy to find sponsors, it's easy to find people to talk to. Yeah, people who can give you advice on how to do things, when to do things and stuff. So we have another question from IRC as well. Uh, let's say, you know, it, do we have a lack of clarity on when people should think of applying? And it's a, what we like to see, at least I think as an AM, is people shouldn't really be thinking of applying as a new member until you think you're ready technically. Um, the, po the point of the advocate is to back, up, back that up and tell the rest of the project that they think you're ready technically as well. We used to have a problem years ago, and sometimes this, this view still holds, that getting into new maintainer that getting into new maintainer could take um, months and months, maybe years. So as soon as you can work out how to generate a PGP key, you should apply. That's the worst way possible. Um, we really want people applying into the new member process who are, frankly, already ready. We're not trying to train people at, at this stage. We're not expecting you to be waiting for years you should be ready and already have the skills. It's now just a case of us verifying those skills. I, I'd like to counter that slightly in that I've had some feedback from people who sort of view that they have to be absolutely on top of everything before they can start the new member process and have to know the answer to every question off the top of their head before they start the new member process. That's absolutely not true. Yes, you need to be absolutely comfortable with the project, you need to feel whatever, but um, I'm fine as an AM with people coming and saying, I don't quite understand the question, or I'm not quite sure, I'm trying to answer it. You know, it's a, it's a conversation rather than a test. It's a, do you know your way around Debian, and when you don't know the answer, you know where to ask, or where to look, or, or both of these things, and, and that's, that's perfectly okay. And equally, you know, there's some of the questions that sort of say, make sure your packages are, um, in good shape and again I've seen people say um, I'm waiting for them to be perfect I'm waiting for my packages to have no bugs and everything to be okay and it's like no make sure they're in decent shape make sure you're happy with them and you think they they're you know ready to ship as part of stable but but software sucks it's not bug free ever you know you've always got bugs in your packages um, whether they've been found yet or not it's another issue so so don't worry about that perfection thing about the process um, if you've got an AM who's being a real stickler and, and whatever then then they're wrong and it, it should be a conversation and it should be something I mean I learn from every single new member I talk to you all have different views in the world than I do, and, and I really enjoy sort of having that conversation. And I'll make people who I know know free software just put it in their own words for me so I can have the conversation, which I admit slightly selfish, and it does make the process a little longer, but I'm not trying to test anyone. I'm trying to have a conversation, and I'm trying to do the social side of things. So, so don't worry about knowing all the answers. Do you know, feel comfortable in Debian. But you just need to know where to look and who to ask. And, and sometimes oh, absolutely, yeah. When I said technically capable, a, a, a chunk of that is also knowing when you don't know the answer, but where to look it up, how to find it. Yeah. So um, again, question actually for, to me, clarifying. So what skills are we looking for before you get into new maintainer, uh, or sorry, new member process? Um, basically, do you have the t if you're looking to do uh, package uploads? Do you know how to do those package uploads? Well, do you know how to manage a package? Do you know how to deal with bug reports? That kind of thing. Yeah, and in general, as a more broad <coughs> attitude, packaging or non-packaging, whether uh, it's a problem if you try and do something and look up how to do it later. Uh, it's not a problem if before doing something that you've never done, you are able to look up information, ask around, uh, so make sure that you know what you're doing when you're doing it, not necessarily when you become a Debian developer, because Debian is too broad. Um, 
and uh, as to when to apply, now we have we had one minute left about one and a half minutes ago. Um, <laughs> at, uh, uh, with regards to when to apply, it's when you feel like you belong, uh, when you need it, uh, like you need to do NMUs for mass bug fixing, you need access to some Debian machines to commit to web pages or something. Uh, so yeah, when you feel like you belong, when you need it, yeah, yeah, if your current status in Debian is hampering your ability to get stuff done in Debian, that's a pretty good sign that you, you should be trying to move to a different one. And if, you, if you're going to come through and go, I'm, I'm doing all this stuff and, and I'm having to ask someone else to sponsor all my uploads, um, absolutely, you know, apply for, for new member or whatever. Or if you're, you know, dealing with a package that has a lot of churn in it and you're trying to get it in a good shape and you have to ask someone to sponsorship, then absolutely ask for Debian maintainer status. If, if you ever find that where you're at in Debian hampers your ability to, to get stuff done, that, that's too, well, it's a red flag about you definitely should be changing. You can do it before that, but if you ever get to that point, absolutely come and talk to someone if you're not sure. But uh. So Jonathan in IRC says that for him with an AM hat on, is the thing he wants to know is, does this applicant know when to stop and seek help? Yep. You know, because at that point, he knows he can trust them not to just break things. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, of course, Debian is a broad church. There are always many different ways of contributing and, and being a project member, as there are people in it. Um, not everybody knows everything. If anyone claims to know everything, they are clearly lying to you. Do not trust them. You know. Um, it, you know, we work together fundamentally. Um, we all tend to find new stuff every day, every week, whatever. Where we, you know, we have to admit we don't know stuff. And you go and you go and work on things. It, we would be totally hypocritical to expect uh, new member um, applicants to be any different. Whenever somebody thinks they understand Debian, Debian will be destroyed and recreated, recreated <laughs> more complicated than before. Ask question how to do the packaging. It's no shame about this. Yeah, absolutely. Also, adding one comment to this show of knowledge. One of the things that keeps me most updated on the current users, the current tools, and so is to, uh, when, when applicants answer because they usually know things much, uh, much newer than what they do. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for what? Question. Talk to us after. Yeah, we're all done. Thanks, folks. If you do have any more questions, there are plenty of people around to, um, you know, come talk to us. Yeah, um, I'm here all week. Enrico, I, I think, am, is yeah. here all week. Steve's here all week. Um, by all means, grab me, bend my ear, ask me questions. Thank you.